Now I've got a cheap uh, little uh, eBay purchase here for us to take a look at. It's a uh, high gain 6 dBi antenna. It's for 2.4 gigahertz. Um, and I will say I did purchase this because uh, I was interested in the form factor of the case. I like how this uh, apparently folds up nice and flat. And I did purchase it to uh, hopefully stick something else inside. But uh, you never know until uh, you uh, test something like this might be okay as is uh, it didn't cost a lot of money i think it was six pounds and about one pound fifty shipping from a uk seller it's uh as the usuals on the back a little bit of uh, broken english but uh yeah it's linear and vertical it's got an rp sma connector on there so you can connect it to most uh, wi-fi adapters or uh, routers uh, if you've got uh, an external connection on your router that is one thing uh, that it does say in the description is that this antenna amplifies your wireless signal that's something that just bugs me uh, an antenna is not an amplifier it just works with whatever energy uh, you pump into it it doesn't amplify in any way whatsoever but uh, let's open this up and see what we've got on the inside and give it a quick test now I've just uh, opened this up as you can see and uh, it's intriguing it doesn't look like the normal uh, cheap stuff that you often find on eBay it's got a little bit of information on here basically just uh, mirroring what it says on the back of the case but uh, you do get this nice little uh, TNC to SMA uh, pigtail adapter here um, so if you wanted to connect it up to a router that has uh, TNC for instance um, most adapters don't have TNC they're all SMA but uh, a little pigtail adapter like this you can probably end up paying uh, two or three pounds for this on eBay on its own so definitely worth it for that and uh, the coax in general is uh, looks uh, pretty good quality coax um, I have to say similar uh, to what I use here in the lab on a lot of my builds certainly not the uh, speaker wire junk that you often find with these cheap antennas so here it is on the uh, test bench then and it's a setup you've seen many times before I thought we'd just take a quick look at the frequency response and I have to say it's a little bit weird so here we are then we're scanning from uh, 2 gigahertz over here all the way up to 3 gigahertz and we've got this nice little dip there in the middle of the Wi-Fi spectrum it's uh, not the widest bandwidth I've ever seen but it's certainly working in uh, the desired area for 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi there um, yeah it's going to work rather well but uh, I'm not sure what all this uh, wavy line stuff is here I've never seen that before it looks like there's some kind of reflections going on inside the antenna I haven't got anything close by uh, for it to reflect off but uh, yeah these wavy lines are a little bit unusual but we have got this dip here 2.45 gigahertz yeah it looks nice but uh, these are unusual wavy lines and as for VSWR you can see uh, bang in the middle where it works best uh, 2.44 gigahertz there on the display we're getting a VSWR of 1.54 so yeah it's an okay VSWR but it's very very narrow in its frequency of operation any uh, you know movement from beyond that uh, 1.44 gigahertz is just going to go up and up and up and have a really bad VSWR but yeah it's extremely narrow now as we saw on the network analyzer it's uh, kind of a narrow signal and uh, all those reflections after that signal as well I'm not quite sure what's causing that but it uh, looks like we've got two Phillips screws here so I'm going to remove them and we'll take a look to see what kind of antenna we've got inside here there's a few more screws than I first thought there's uh, three on the bottom that we have to remove it's not as simple as removing those two screws there and uh, these two screws holding the hinge uh, part of this antenna in place so a few more screws to remove so this took a little bit of work to get into it than I thought it would have done. The uh, case um, here, it's uh, not glued in, but it was really, really tight. I've uh, damaged some of the little uh, uh, plastic tags on the edges, but uh, it's pretty clean on the outside. So um, maybe I can stick something different in here in the future. A few more screws than I first thought there were. But uh, now we've opened it up, we can see that it's a uh, single element uh, panel antenna. Now... 
a couple of things that jump out of me first um well one thing that is pretty good is that we've got real metal here so it's uh, you know it's not uh, overly thin metal for the uh, driven element here same with the uh, back reflector at least it's not that uh, aluminium tape so it's going to have a much better front to back ratio than uh, something with uh, aluminium tape in there but uh, let's take a look at the measurements then now the width of this is coming out at 57.9 millimeters you can call that 58 millimeters and the length is coming out at 52.3 millimeters and something else that concerns me is the width of this feed here when I've built them in the past and uh, I'll put a link to uh, a calculator that I use in the description I go for something a little bit narrower around five to six millimeters but you can see here this is almost 11 millimeters in width so I'm not sure what's going on with that um, you know it could possibly be altering the 50 ohm impedance I don't know but uh, I've always stuck to something a little bit narrower than that with all my builds that I've uh, ever done in the past. Uh, I've never gone with something quite so wide. And you can see it also comes out a little bit here. Um, again, whether that's just something to do with the matching and everything else with this particular one, I don't know. But that's 148 millimeters. So I've just had to go over my notes in some black sharpie so it shows up a little bit better on uh, the uh, camera here. But uh, these are my notes that I tend to use when I'm building a single element uh, panel antenna, patch antenna like this one here. And I'll put a link as I said in the description to the website that I typically use. Um, a couple of things you need to know is what dielectric you're using uh, this one is using air and I tend to use air as well you can round uh, the dielectric constant of air to one um, the height six millimeters is what I tend to use because uh, these little nylon spaces and things like that tend to be around uh, six millimeters long as a standard uh, part and they've also used six millimeters here as well um, but the measurements differ a little bit from the measurements that uh, I use. The uh, width of uh, this one here is 58 millimeters in width. Now, the width that I use is 61.18 millimeters. And if you put these into the website that I'm going to link below, you'll come up with the same uh, answer for the width. Uh, the length is on this one is. 52.4 millimeters um, the width on mine is 52.94 millimeters so again you know it's a fraction out but only a fraction something I like to do as well is cut in to uh, the uh, you know the main body of the driven element and that reduces the VSWR and uh, gives a slightly better impedance as well and as I was saying with uh, this feed here with it being so wide I tend to stick to around five to six millimeters and then that keeps uh, everything nice uh, around the, the 50 ohm mark um, if you want to cut in your feed like uh, this one here on this uh, picture um, I tend to go in at a quarter wavelength which is for this is uh, 7.8 millimeters that's the length that I uh, cut in and I only have a uh, one millimeter gap um, same as if you were to etch this out on uh, you know some FR4 board or were to cut it out of uh, some sheet uh, metal like this one here is so yeah I've got a couple of issues with the measurements on this one but uh, as you saw on the network analyzer it uh, did have a nice frequency response there albeit uh, quite a narrow frequency response for uh, 2.45 gigahertz but uh, it also had uh, quite a few bumpy wavy lines it looks as if it had uh, some reflection issues after you're yeah, going further up in the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum so i'm not sure what's going on there but uh, those are the measurements for this one and uh, these are my measurements if you uh, ever wanted to have a go at uh, building one of these now looking at the plastic case this is uh, quite thick plastic it seems to be a, an abs type plastic not sure whether that was co uh, causing those uh, reflections that we were seeing on the network analyzer 
but it is pretty thick stuff. Um, I'm tempted to hook this up again and give it a second test without this uh, front part on the case, just to see if we see those reflections again. Because, you know, I normally tell people when they're painting, as long as uh, you know you paint your antenna, make sure it hasn't got any metals in the paint or anything like that. Um, you know, I use cork a lot as a dielectric. Uh, you don't have to worry about it too much. Plastic, um, you know, tends to have a, a, a pretty uh, standard dielectric constant in its own. Uh, not all plastics uh, do, though. Uh, neoprene has quite a high dielectric constant. Off the top of my head, I think it's about 7, uh, 7 point something. But uh, normally with a plastic like this, I would say, you know, if you're building an antenna, don't worry too much about it. But... Uh, I'm just uh, wondering now whether this uh, particular plastic is causing those reflections. Now it's always worth doing a quick check like this just to check your uh, theories as you're going along and uh, you know the uh, plastic seemed to make uh, a little bit of sense to me but as we see on the network analyzer it's still exactly the same as before. And here it is on the network analyzer exactly the same waveform as before so all these uh, little waves here at the beginning I've got absolutely nothing to do with the uh, case so to conclude then um, yeah it's uh, interesting I'm not quite sure what those reflections are I mean uh, possibly again I don't know but maybe this uh, the width of this feed has got something to do with causing those uh, reflections and uh, as I said at the beginning I did reset my network analyzer a few times I thought you know maybe it's my equipment but uh, it's certainly not uh, this is causing some uh, kind of reflection going on um, yeah I mean it's certainly worth the money I haven't tried it over a wireless network yet but uh, you know it is resonant at uh, 245 gigahertz just where you uh, want it to be but uh, if you do want to build something like this then I suggest you use uh, these measurements here and uh, use that uh, website that I'll link below to help you uh, I wouldn't go copying these measurements now I will make a uh, second video on this and uh, we will make uh, my measurements in uh, a panel antenna like you see here on uh, this page uh, we'll do a test over Wi-Fi as well with uh, this one and then a separate test with mine see if we uh, increase things a little bit um, and also it'll be interesting uh, I'll use mine and see if we get those reflections on the network analyzer as well I mean uh, when I've built these in the past they certainly don't get reflections like this one does so uh, unless we've got some uh, you know dodgy coax or it is this uh, feed point here and I'm, I'm not too certain because the metal whether I use brass copper or you know steel like this one is shouldn't make any difference uh, in uh, you know having those reflections there shouldn't make any difference at all but uh, yeah what it is not quite sure but uh, hopefully in the second video we'll find out so hopefully you found this uh, little video uh, interesting taking another look at a uh, cheap uh, Wi-Fi antenna off eBay and you know as far as negatives are concerned it's hard to knock this I mean it is uh, resonant right where you want it to be it does seem to have some decent coax on here and you know the case really is nice that's why uh, I want to uh, replace this with something a little bit more decent you know it folds up into a small form factor if you want to take it away on holiday but uh, yeah it's uh, it's always interesting to take a look at these things so if you did enjoy this video, please give it a uh, thumbs up. Any comments or questions, drop them below and I'll do my best to answer them. And hopefully, you'll join me on the next one.